It's been a while since we did a business update, so that's what we're doing today, finally. Um, a lot has happened with the company. For those who are unfamiliar with the history of WMGP Corp, you can go to capitalismfans.com, business journal, and hit up the WMGP business journal. Um, for those of you who are new or watching this for the first time, this is my first video. Um, and I'm using Capitalism Lab 2.1.02 beta. Um, like most, I leave notes to tell me what I was working on last um, as far as the business is concerned. And this is indicating that there's something going on with this chemical material mine and that we're working on our retail op um, expanding our retail operation in Rome. So, um, since the last update, um, I have been playing uh, um, at one point a lot. Recently, I haven't been playing as much because I wanted to do this business update now that we're um, in a position where our merger, uh, our multi-billion dollar mergers are fully integrated and now we're um, starting to operate as one combined company. So, um, what companies did we merge with? It was two. It was two companies that actually that's where we should start. So, the companies that we merged with were two companies that were in the food and snacks business. Um, I don't quite remember their names, so I'm definitely going to find that for us in here. Um, and in every other market, in every other pro product category they operated in, there was a lot of overlap between our companies. So it made, um, and the, the food and snacks business had a higher market necessity than our current, um, than our current operations. And so it made it a really, um, uh, a really good merger, something that we needed in order to, to increase our performance doing um, um, economic recessions like we are in now. Um, doesn't look like I can find the name of those companies anymore. So what we what we did um, is that we merged two um, two big players in the food and snacks business. Um, both were very successful, most high billion dollar companies. Um, to combine to merge both of those companies together at once took at least half of our um, ca uh, our cash on hand. So it was a very big bet that actually paid off um, very well for us as a company. Um, so this, so the, um, so our financial performance um, or the information that we're going over now is including our um, legacy businesses, the food and snack business, which we were able to expand um, into every market, whereas before there were more regional um, operators, which is one of the opportunities that we saw is that we could use our our capital um, and our resources to get them to be a multinational. Um, company and introduce their products um, and it was it was a very it was a lot of work um, merging to and we merged them both at the same time which we would probably never ever do again um, and it took a lot of time because it wasn't so much about speed as far as delicacy because we wanted to we needed to maintain their customers maintain their brands maintain their opera their uh, manufacturing operations maintain um, their retail stores until we had time to really identify what is what is valuable to us as a continuing in as a combined entity and what's not and so we took a lot of care um, in doing that um, and it was really it worked out really well um, though it did take a lot of time a lot of effort it was really worth it um, and I'm glad that the focus wasn't so much on com completing the merger and more and, and that we had the luxury of uh, you know, taking the time to really analyze and really think about what what assets do we need to maintain and what do we need to keep. Um, in the areas where we were overlapping a lot, we just immediately um, terminated their manufacturing, combined it to ours, and dealt with supply issues later. And that resulted in significant cost savings immediately, um, which we actually needed um, to realize as soon as possible so that we did have the luxury for those uh, for the other assets which did not overlap to really um, take the time to identify what was in the best interest long-term best interest of our company customers and employees so um, at this time our net worth is 764 billion dollars we're currently being undervalued on the stock market due to the recession 
Um, we have $242 billion in cash. Annual revenue is coming in at about $150 billion. Annual operating profit is $21 billion net profit. Um, our annual net profit margin, uh, pro net profit is coming at $20 billion. Um, the number of employees that we have is, as a combined entity is 55,406. Um, and that, on the surface, seems like a lot of employees, but when you look at us, um, as we go into our strategy, go more into details of our operation, you realize that these employees are really needed um, in order to, for us to continue to grow as a company, to take advantage of market opportunities. Um, and so we'll get into that um, a little later on. Our return on equity is a respectable 2.69%. Um, and the 2.69% seems kind of low, but you're talking about a billion. We have 200, our net worth is what, $764 billion. In order to return anything above uh, fractions of a percentage, um, fractions of, our, of a percentage is, is amazing or phenomenal and good for investors. Um, and then to see that we're, our return on equity is second to um, a, a smaller company is, is really encouraging. It's not that much, and we're not that far behind them. Um, what, once we made the merger in order to make sure that we, to buy, to buy us the time so that we had the leisure or the luxury to, to lose money on the operations until we had time to really figure out what assets, um, what, what assets we needed to keep and which ones we needed to take away. We immediately issued a dividend to our stockholders because we knew that the overlap in sales, we knew the market that we were getting into, we knew the growth opportunity, we knew how it was going to grow. We, we immediately knew that these mergers would work out to the best, um, in the best interest of, uh, best long-term interest of us as a company, for our shareholders, and our mutual customers. Um, so we immediately um, issue a dividend, um, and that has helped a lot as far as executive compensation for myself as well as for the other senior executive team members, because we have really been putting in a lot of work, and uh, we don't want to really bloat our um, we don't want to bloat our expenses with um, with salary expenses. So one way that we reward ourselves is to return money to shareholders. Um, and it's more performance based, so if we don't make a lot of money um, um, from our operations, we don't, you know, it's, it's more of a bonus as I see it. And that has worked out really well. Um, we have, our executive team has done a phenomenal job on executing the strategy, growing the company, getting the merger done, and has been rewarded very handsomely for it. Um, our operating profit margin is not 14.17%. Our net profit margin is 13.50%, and our inventory turnover is at 13.66 times, which is very high, um, and it's an area that we're looking to address. Um, in, in most circumstances, you would think a high inventory turnover is a good thing. Um, it's actually not, because that means, because um, there's areas uh, which, we will, um, which we will cover later, where our company is, um, really suffering under um, coping with the scale. And um, in Capitalism Lab, um, when you begin, it, it seems like it has everything that it, that it needs in order for you to run a, multi, uh, a multi-billion dollar corporation. But as you start hitting the scales that we're beginning to hit, you start identifying limitations that are pretty challenging to, to overcome. And you have to come up with creative solutions for it, which is something that I, um, that I experienced in Capitalism Lab too. Um, it's something that, and, and it's very, it gives you a different perspective. Like when you're running a, a $500 million business, you know, this, you have a, every tool that you need, but how do you, how do you cope? How do you manage? How do you scale your company at these, at these bill, at $150 billion? How do you, how do you do that with the tools? with the same tools that you had as a $500 million company. So that's a challenge. Um, um, hopefully I'm able to go over some of my ideas of creative solutions with you guys today on how we plan to use those tools to really scale our company. 
Um, another area that I like to cover first is the income statement. And the reason why I like to go over the income statement after the rankings is because the um, I like looking at the last one because it gives you a real, as a um, chief executive or a CEO, you have a hard time really keeping in touch or really knowing how the business is doing um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And so the income statement for the last month gives you a real-time snapshot of how your company is operating, the health, where's the challenges, um, are you losing money? Are you making money? Is your strategy paying off? Are customers coming into the stores? Um, you really don't have the ability to go into the stores and see the customers. So you have to depend on the income statement. So last month we brought in $12.43 billion. Um, the biggest expenses is cost of sales, salary, um, operating, overhead, advertising and PR. Um, and amazingly, training and new equipment, which goes to the inventory problem, um, are some of our biggest expenses. And it's actually, um, our training and new equipment budget is actually larger than our research and development budget, um, which is very interesting because we, we have a, a massive R&D operation um, because we do have disruptive technology turned on. The way that we do our research and development is that we have four what we call innovation centers where the entire R&D unit focuses on one product, on, on getting us the technology or catching us up on technology on one product. Um, because sometimes there's a product, uh, there's a technology that we need or that we have fallen behind it and we're not able to buy it from our competitors. So the innovation centers come into play at that point. Um, we're on a two year release cycle, which seems to be on um, this sweet spot. And when it comes to technology disruption, at least in this version of Capitalism Lab, of making sure that you don't wait too long to upgrade your technology to improve your product um, and still be able to produce a high quality product uh, for your customers. Um, the stock return and increase in assets are in the negative, but, that's, um, but that is mostly tied to the economic state of the economy. Um, once, the, once the economy recovers and starts flourishing again, those things tend to take care of itself, um, at least in this version of Capitalism Lab. Next thing we're going to go over is the balance sheet. So last year we made $3.90 billion. In, um, we increased our cash to reserve by $3.90 billion. Um, our inventory is at 11. Uh, our inventory increased by $444 million. What I want to point out here, which is actually something I didn't know until I started recording um, um, this business update, is that our inventory that we have on hand of $11.13 billion is less than our monthly operating revenue. And so that just goes to show you that there's a big, 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 big problem that we have with inventory because we don't even have enough inventory on hand, supposedly, um, to handle um, one month of sales. So we're, um, when we were a smaller company, utilization was a very big focus for us as a company. But now, as a larger company, it's not so much about utilization. Now it's about making sure that we have the product that our customers want in the stores. And that's, that's been an area that, that's been very challenging to address. Um, some of it is a result of the limitation of tools that we have at hand. Um, others is a result of us just not having um, our infrastructure, our manufacturing um, systems um, in place. Um, to really um, to really support this, the scale that we are operating at. Um, our business assets increased last year um, overall by $204 million. Um, this year it has actually increased by $14 million. Um, our technology, we have $271, bill, $271 million in technology assets on our book, which increased $72 million last year. Um, our stock, um, our stock, even though when you look at the income statement, it makes you a little con worry, or it did for me, that we're not really making money on our stock investments. But then you go to the balance sheet and you go to year to date and you realize, you know what, I am making money um, on stocks and um, we're not losing a ton of money. Um, however, due to... <clears throat> 
um, which is which is very reassuring that we have that we are um, utilizing our capital in a way that is actually generating return for us as a company and therefore our shareholders. Um, the four billion dollars um, that we lost so far this year is actually a result of the dividend that we paid out um, this year. And so we do pay out a lot of money in dividends. Again, this is how we reward our executive shareholders for um, for the hard work they've done. Um, and it is based on our operating income. And it's very generous. Um, um, but we have the capital, we have the financial position, we have the market leadership in order to sustain this. And so whenever we issue or pay out a dividend of 6 or $7 billion to our executives share, um, who, who are our shareholders, um, it's not something that's taken away from the business um, because of how well we're doing and will continue to do in the future. So this is a way of, bring, of retaining the talent that we have, our executive team, and really um, incentivizing, incentivizing them to execute on our strategy. So now that we went over the financial information, we're going to now take a look at where, how, how, what is our market share? Where are we in these product categories? Are we a leader? Are we falling behind? Are we a lagger? Where, 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 you know, where, where are we as a combined company, and where do we need to be? So um, our executive leadership team met recently and decided that. Um, and we set a goal to be number one or number two in every product category that we are currently operating in. Um, that is a that is a big grow a big uh, a big goal that indicates a lot of um, in this um, our market share indicates a lot of growth or, or organic growth within the product categories that we're already in. Um, in some areas, we're actually meeting or exceeding. Our, our goal is in some areas we need to really beef it up and really bring it um, bring up the business and so while you when you look at our company from a financial perspective you think that's a very successful company and then um, the, um, the Wall Street wants to know how are you going to grow you have 200 you bring in 150 billion dollars in revenue um, how can you continue growing as a company? Not that we're worried about growth, but we have a lot of organic growth in the product categories and markets that we're already in that we just need to, to take advantage of those opportunities. Right now we're the number one retailer, the number one manufacturer, we're number two in farming and raw material production, um, and um, shockingly we're number one in real estate. Um, which um, is kind of an oddball. You think, why are you number one in real estate? Um, a lot of the company, the companies that we merge actually had um, substantial real estate holdings. And then when you really look at how the real estate market is set up in capitalism now, you, you need a company with a very strong balance sheet um, um, who has the ability to really invest and get these um, apartments and commercial buildings up. And, that that basically explains why we have such a large real estate presence because we have the financial ability to really support the markets that we're operating in, making sure they have housing and enough commercial buildings. Um, we this kind of came as an accident. Um, our leadership, but once you really um, look at it, um, it makes sense that a large major corporation has a large real estate presence because who else is going to be able to? To maintain such a such, um, be able to support such a large real estate market, um, if without, um, in order to do that, you have to have a strong balance sheet, and so this is a business that we, um, we appreciate. You know, it brings in a profit, so that's the most important thing. But it also supports um, the communities that we operate in, um, and we have the financial capital in order to do it. So we, we, we're not the last resort. Um, but but it does help us a lot. We have um, and the fact that we have the balance sheet is it really basically explains how we became such a large force in the real estate market. So in apparel, we are um, at we're in second place, but we're far uh, um, a distance number two. So apparel is an area where we need to really identify open new st identify um, what needs to be done in order to grow our market share. We can stay number two in apparel. We don't have to be number one. Number two is a fine position, but to be so far 
um, to be at such a distance, number two, is a little concerning. Um, so we'll have to analyze it and see if there's something that we need to really aggressively pursue a higher number or not. Um, one thing that I have noticed um, is that the number one retailer, um, whenever you see someone who's number one in a market share for a certain category, it doesn't really mean that they're making a profit. Um, it doesn't mean um, that they're not making a profit. Um, in many cases, even at 22% of, um, even at 20%, I guess, will be an average of our pair, 20 to 30% of the pair of market, we, are tend, we tend to have the biggest profit when it comes to a pair which is very, very interesting, very interesting um, and sometimes shocking that we're listed as number two, but we're broke. But when you look at who's number one, how much money they're bringing in revenue and what their profit is, it's oftentimes less than ours. So we, um, we need to really um, go deeper into um, analyzing our apparel business see if we need to do anything to increase our numbers or if we're just fine where we are. Um, the beverage business, uh, we have become number one in, um, a significant like the market leader in beverages. Um, body care products is one of our legacy businesses, businesses from way back when we first started as a health and um, a beauty and health company. Uh, we have lost a lot of a lot of ground in that business and that's something that we would really want to increase our um, our positioning in. Um, communications devices is more of a supply supply issue. Smartphones and HUD, gla HUD glasses is something um, are products that we have just not um, put a lot of focus on, number one. Number two, we ha we're not ever able to meet the demand even during a recession, during a booming economy, never able to meet the demand for smart and HUD glasses. And so that's something that we will really begin focusing on is how can, because these are very expensive products, they bring in a lot of revenue, um, there's a huge demand for these um, communication devices. So that's an area of focus for us, something that we will um, be trying to increase our market presence in and hopefully securing a stronger number two or number one position. Um, and when it comes to the computer market, um, our computer business, we have high quality products. It hasn't been doing that well. Um, it's a very challenging market to operate, or a product category to operate in due to um, they're very expensive. Um, the, necess the necessity is not really there, um, but we do need to um, identify if this is a core business that we need to stay in. Or in it. And if we do agree that, then we definitely need to um, become a number, at least a number two player in that market um, before we, we even consider merging out into another um, product category. Cosmetics is another one of our um, legacy businesses. Um, we also have lost a ton of ground uh, when it comes to cosmetics. Um, so there's a lot of growth um, in that market. We're still, um, we do need, we haven't really analyzed that market, um, that, that product category yet to really see what needs to be done. Um, well, what I have noticed is that while we're dealing with the merge of getting our manufacturing infrastructure in place, expanding the food, um, the food and um, the food and snacks business is that the bigger uh, big markets we did we haven't really opened up new stores until recently and so I think that's where a lot of this market share loss is coming from is the fact that our retail presence isn't as strong as it was due to um, us being distracted in um, in merger integration and so now that we have the merger integration out of uh, out of the way we can now look into opening more retail outlets, increasing the supply to our retail um, stores or partners, you know, and, and re regaining um, our footing in the markets that we have lost some footing in. Um, the drug business is another business where we, um, another one of our legacy businesses where um, we, we've lost a lot of, a lot of share in. We're at 21% of a market that we used to be um, a close number two or a number one in. Um, and again, I think it's just, a, a, I think the main problems with, with these businesses or with areas where we lost a lot of ground is our retail presence and supply. 
electronic products is one of the, uh, is a product that we um is always um, seems to be a part in. These are very challenging, especially in a recession, to maintain a market share in. Um, sometimes it's not profitable. It's just a very challenging business, but it's a, but we have a lot of growth there. And that's um, and that's why we are continue to you know really execute on our goals. Um, and so instead of going over everything, I think it's time. Um, I think at this time we're just gonna go ahead and focus on just the product categories because we operate in a lot of product categories that um, that I need to update you on. So um, the food product category was one of the um, product category. Um, the food business was the bit was the main reason why we merged two multi um, billion dollar successful companies because we wanted to enter the food business, um, and this is where for the last decade or more our focus has really been in getting the food business, um, to expanding the food business, getting it international making sure that we had the quality, that we had the manufacturing infrastructure to support the scale. And at, and we have done a very a phenomenal job in maintaining the leadership position that those two companies had. We um, retaining the customers that they had, um, expanding their market share and growing their business. Um, uh, as you can see here, we're number two in the business. We're, we're, um, we're somewhat of a distance number two, but just to, just to, just to know where we came from of not having any presence in this market to having 32, 33, 37, 46, 29% market share in product categories that we never had market share in being number two in these markets is really phenomenal and, um, and it is a testament to our executive team um, and we've done a great job and we'll continue to focus on the business, continuing opening new stores, making, uh, continuing allocating resources um, allocating um, whatever resources necessary to strengthen and maintain our, our presence in those markets. Um, and the other area where I would like to focus on is going to be snacks because that's the other reason why we merge with merge with the those companies is to also get our foot into the snacks business. The snack business has been a very very successful. Um, it seems like a tale of two different stories, but I think it's really a tale of, of our supply issues. Why in the snacks business we're number one or close number two, whereas in the food business we're number two, number number two or number number two in the food business, number two in the food business or distance number two is really a supply problem. And once we, once I go into our manufacturing hubs and you really see you will begin to understand that supply is really holding us back. Supply in our retail presence. So as you as you can see here, we're in a lot of market categories. Um, and many of these market categories where we are have we're in a very good position. We're um we're um in some categories we're not in a very good position. Computers for instance, we're ranking fourth fourth place with twelve percent and nine percent of the market. And so we um, at some point, we're going to have to really see if it's worthwhile even being in the business, um, which looking at the, the, the market leader market, the, the leader market share tells us it should be a, a phenomenal growth market, but is it really worth it? How are we going to grow um, that business? How are we going to realize this opportunity? And, it, um, and so that's something that we'll have to address going forward. Um, um, another thing I'd like for you to take away from um, from this report is that we have a lot of opportunity to develop organic growth um, in our business. Even at a $150 billion revenue run rate, there's still a lot of growth. Even at um, even at a 42% market share in retail, we still have a lot of uh, a lot of potential to to grow that to 45 or 50 or 60% of the market share. Um, so there, so we have a lot of opportunity ahead of us. We have a lot of challenges. We have a lot of work to do still, even um, as uh, as the largest company. Um, there's still a lot for us to do. There's still um, a lot of work to get done. There's still a lot uh, that we can do to improve our services 
for our customers and improve our, uh, our position strategically and execute on our goals. Um, as far as the business update is concerned, um, I'm going to go ahead and end this here because this is um, this gives you a good overview of our financial position, our ranking, um, our uh, financial uh, operations. This is a good um, overview of our financial operations, um, what product categories we're in. Um, it gives you an idea of the income as well as our balance sheet. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over, switch this over um, and do another video that goes into more details on our operation if you're interested in seeing that. Um, but as far as a financial review, this, this I believe wraps it up. So um, check out the next video which will be posted, which will be starting to go into more details about operations, how many stores we have, etc.